What's up guys? Um, you may be wondering why I have a pad of, pen, uh, pad of paper in my hand here with a pen. Well, I got to thinking about some things and um, well, I got to thinking about one thing in particular. I, I, I used to actually buy and sell cars, you know, years back and I got to thinking about maybe doing it again sometime, but I really honestly got to thinking for all the time and effort and money that you're going to spend on uh, trying to make money off of a vehicle, you know, because you don't want to be labeled as that scumbag that goes out and buys a piece of junk and then pawns it off onto somebody else and then you're the guy that pawns off junk on somebody else. You don't want to be that guy. You know, you want to be the guy that people say, hey man, go see if he's got a car because he's got really good stuff and he works them over really good and makes sure that they're right. Um, now this is for a private individual because you're allowed to sell I think one or two cars a month legally. Um, anyways, I'm just doing this as an example. I wrote this mock-up. I actually did look for this stuff online to make sure that the prices were pretty accurate and stuff. Okay, what I did was I went to Craigslist and I looked to see if I could find a vehicle with a blown head gasket. And I found one. Now it says $600 or best offer. Well, conservatively, let's say we're talking down to 500 bucks on this car. Well, it's a 97 Honda Civic for 500 bucks. We talked him down conservatively to $500. Okay, and it's got a blown head gasket. Let's say he's right. Let's say he knows what he's talking about and all it is is a blown head gasket. Well, the blown head gasket is alone $38.49, you can see here. You really need to change your head bolts too whenever you're changing a head gasket. You need to do it. Sorry, but I'm that guy. I will change the head bolt set. Okay, it says it's $186.99 right here. Now, let's say, now, so far, just in what you bought the car for and what you bought the head gasket and the head bolt set for is $725.48. Now, that's without taxes and stuff. That's, that's just what it says that the parts cost. Okay, let's say you're a pretty good guy and you're not going to sell somebody a piece of garbage, so you're going to at least do an oil and filter change. Let's say 30 bucks for Jeep oil and filter change, just to change the oil and filter. That way, if they decide to check the oil and filter, they'll see clean oil. So 30 bucks. Now we're up to $755.48. Now let's say it costs $75 for a title transfer. I don't know what it costs to transfer a title. And we'll talk about that in the next video, but right now we're gonna stick with this. So, $75, tax title, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Now we're up to $830.48. Okay, we've just spent $830.48 on a vehicle. Now, let's say we have our own truck and our own trailer, and we go pick the car up. It costs us 20 bucks in gas. You need to add that on to the price of the vehicle so that whenever you get to the final stage of selling it, you can get into your profit range of what you actually made off of it. So Kelly Blue Book says that this car in good condition, I gave it good condition because he said it's got some dents and dings and it probably has rust. It's a 97. There's probably rust on it, but I don't know. It is a Honda Civic. Honda Civics are pretty good cars and they don't really rust out too badly if they're taken care of, just like with anything other. Uh, any other vehicle. Anyways, uh, so let's estimate two days of repair time. You have to add that in. Your time is worth something. Let's say it costed you 50 bucks a day. That's what you're getting paid labor for yourself. 50 bucks a day. So it costed you another $100. So 
So that's $950.48 that you have basically spent on this vehicle. Now, $1,761 is the maximum Blue Book price. That is Kelly Blue Book. I looked it up. You can see it here. Anyways, now that you've seen it and you've seen that part, what I am going to do... Okay, now that you've seen it and I've showed you that part, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this. Let's say you get the maximum out of it. So, you get the absolute maximum. $1,700.61 somebody paid you for this vehicle. It's never going to happen. But let's say that they gave you that much for it. You just spent $950. So, $950.48. Out of the 1700 okay so your magic profit was $819 which my math may be wrong because I'm not real good with numbers <laughs> anyways so your, your profit was $819 that's fantastic but that's never gonna happen in the real world because number one that car is probably gonna sit there and sit there and sit there at $1,761 Probably nobody's ever going to give you $1,761 for a car sitting in your yard, more than likely. You're going to get people that are coming by and try to Jew you down and Jew you down and Jew you down. And, and eventually you're going to break. But let's say you hold off and you hold off really well and conservatively you get $1,400 for it. Let's say that you're lucky enough to get $1,400 out of that vehicle. Well, $1,400 minus $950 is really not that much profit because you're talking about a month, two months that you've set on that vehicle that you've actually lost money because you're technically losing about, well, 30 bucks a day every day that you have to make that sit there. Now, for a used car lot, this is worse. I do know that for a fact because a used car lot actually has overhead. Um, I got to thinking about this all because my, uh, my buddy had just went to, uh, a guy we went to school with, um, he went over to his car lot and he got a vehicle and I got to thinking, you know, if these guys do this right, even if it's a buy here, pay here, they've got overhead, they've got insurance, they've got the, the building maintenance, they've got all this stuff that they have to pay for. So they mark up the prices and it's buy here, pay here. And a lot of people will actually spend a little more for like a low down payment. They'll be more unwilling to do a buy here, pay here for like almost double what the vehicle is actually worth Kelly Blue Book. You know, just so they have a car so they can get back and forth to work. They can get their kids where they need to go. You know, I mean, and this is the facts. Um, because I've, I've been there. I've, I went to buy here, pay here places just so that I could actually have a vehicle because I really desperately needed a vehicle or I was going to lose my job or whatever. Um, uh, you know, so, but these guys have overhead. So that's one of the reasons why they don't do all of this extra stuff. They might change the head gasket and then just slam it out on the lot and hope for the best, you know, because they don't really want the vehicles to come back to them because that means they got to go through all this stuff again and that starts costing them money. So, um, <clears throat> so like, when it comes down to it, making money buying and selling used vehicles is really one of those things that's actually, there's a fine line. Now, if you're a legitimate used car lot, you know, you can write it off on your taxes what your losses were, which is fine. And still, you could end up doing quite well. But if you're an individual just trying to sell vehicles out of your yard, which, like I say, you're allowed one or two a month per person. I forget what it is. I think it's actually one because you're only allowed 12 vehicles a year without being hit with trying to run a car lot, which... Uh, 
you know, you have to have uh, a facility to house the vehicles, uh, you know, you have to be able to, you know, maintain the insurance and all this other stuff. I'm not going to go into all the regulations because there's actually several. And then, you know, and then actually some people feel like they just got screwed by the car lot, but they did what they had to do in order to get a vehicle. Um, anyways, um, what, what really got me to thinking was my buddy and, and the simple fact that he really needed a vehicle. Well, anyways, it's got a bad exhaust leak. I mean, an awful exhaust leak. He said he has to roll with the back windows down, which it may not sound like a big ordeal, but we did have it over here, and I had it up. I was under there, and the the bolt is stuck. It's going to have to be broke loose and knocked out, and the O gas, the uh, O ring gasket is going to have to be replaced. The the ring gasket is going to have to be replaced in there in order to get it done. So that's going to cost him money for the parts. That's going to cost him time to do that. You know, he's already buying the vehicle. He shouldn't have to be doing the maintenance and stuff on it immediately as soon as he pulls it off the lot. That's not right. It's not fair at all. So, something for you car dealers to actually think about. When you're into this, do it right, man. Don't let that thing leave the lot with a nasty leak. My buddy's got freaking kids. Little baby. He just had a baby. You don't want that baby sucking in those fumes. That's terrible. That stuff will choke an adult. Imagine what it's doing to that poor kid. You know, anyways, I won't go any farther into that, but when it comes down to trying to make money off of buying and selling vehicles, I do have a few buddies that actually just buy the vehicle and then pawn it off instantly, and they'll make 100, 150 bucks off of each and every vehicle that they buy and sell. They'll get somebody in a desperate, desperate situation. You know, these are these are scavengers. They'll get people in desperate situations and be like, oh, well, I'll give you this much for your car right now. You know, and that's it. You know, good running driving vehicle. A little bit of rust, some dents, no big deal. But if you give 250, 300 bucks for a car that runs and drives and you don't have to do anything to it and you can get 600 bucks out of it, there you go. You're making good money, and you didn't have to do anything. But we're going to talk about something else in the next video, so you guys be on the lookout for that one too, which actually I'm getting ready to make that, but I don't want to mix it with this one. So anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, and um, feel free to subscribe. Um, I'll have more stuff like this. I'll have more, more of my other stuff that I always have. You know, I've got my car stuff, i got my truck going, the, I, my projects. So, but I like to do stuff like this and I like to do reviews. I like to keep my channel kind of going and stuff. So y'all stay tuned and, and uh, I hope you have a spectacular day or night, whichever one it is for you. Thank you for watching.